This is the tutorial video for the programming example voice synth bass example. So as I mentioned in the article, we have algorithm 4 here. And some of the things we're going to be showing in this is uh, what modulator stacks uh, do, where you have multiple modulators feeding into your carrier where one modulator goes through another. So we call that a modulator stack. Most of our programming examples uh, from before have used algorithm 5, where we've separated out our modulators, but uh, this time we're going to uh, stack them up. So the way this is set up, we have operator 2 that modulates operator 1, but operator 4 modulates operator 2 before that modulates operator 1. In addition, operator 3 modulates operator 1, and operator 4 also modulates operator 3 again before it modulates operator 1. So this is a unique algorithm to Reface DX and it's kind of cool because we have a shared modulator that modulates two other modulators and then those independently now modulate our carrier operator 1. So I know that sounds like a lot of modulators going on but that's actually one of the things that makes FM really cool. When you start stacking your modulators you get much more complex harmonic structures because instead of just using a sine wave to modulate a sine wave you actually get to create a wave in the first interaction before you go down to the bottom. So, uh, moving onward. Um, let's turn off all our modulators and you can see uh, again we're looking for a bass sound so we need something that's got really solid fundamentals because obviously this is going to anchor our song. And um, I started here and I used a little bit of feedback um, on our carrier wave just so it's not a pure sine wave. So I'm going to turn this off. So now you just hear a pure sine wave. And we have a touch of saw type feedback to add a little bit of the even harmonic series. So we're going to turn on operator 2. And again we have our 1 to 1 ratios. Um, I have an output level of 83, feedback of 63. Um, and I'm using square type feedback here. So as I mentioned in the article, Square feedback and sawtooth feedback give you a little different harmonic structure in our um, modulator wave so that uh, the result sounds a little bit different. So for this particular example, I didn't want to go with just your standard uh, sawtooth wave type synth bass. I wanted something that's more like a mixed waveform where you have a sawtooth wave and a uh, pulse wave of some sort mixed together. So these are our two components. Just to show you an example of the difference, let's change this to saw. So now you can hear that's got the more classic sawtooth type of uh, result, which is what you would expect from our other examples where we have our uh, where we have our ratios at one to one that makes our you know typical sawtooth wave. So again, that's with sawtooth feedback. That's with square wave feedback. So let's turn on operator 4. We have it set up with the tuning of 2.0, level of 55, sawtooth wave feedback, and our feedback level of 70. So now as you look through our chain here, our 2.0 modulates our 1.0, and then the result of that modulates our carrier wave 1. Let me actually turn off my reverb here. Anyway, so let's hear our sound so far. So in isolation, let's turn off all our modulators here. That's our carrier. That's our ops 1 and 2. And that's our ops 4, 2, and 1. So what's happening here is we're adding a lot more harmonic content much quicker into the sound as we start stacking our modulators. In other words, uh, it gets brighter in a more efficient way than just keep raising the uh, output level or the feedbacks of our single modulator. Plus now, of course, we can have different velocity settings. Um, you can see here we have a lot more velocity in OP4 than OP2. And of course, you can have completely different uh, envelope uh, settings. Now, for this particular bass sound, they're actually fairly similar. But what I really wanted to do here is start showing you how the difference is when we have these modulators stacked. So to give you an audio example of that, what we're going to do is here, we're going to change our algorithm to algorithm 5. So what that did is that moved operator 4 
feeding directly into our carrier operator number one. And now you're going to see that the sound is much less harmonically rich by doing that. There's a lot more brightness and harmonic content when we have our operators stacked here because we're creating more harmonics in our modulator source as it comes down the stack. So again, this is our uh, example. And this is how it is when we just branch them out. Alright, so now let's turn off both of these. Turn on operator 3. Now operator 3 here, it's kind of like a little hidden operator. I'm using it, but I'm not using it so much in a bass sound, but I'm going to show you why I have it set up the way it is. Uh, most importantly, um, we again have our 1.00 uh, uh, tuning ratio. We have a level of 75. I got a ton of velocity sensitivity here. Square wave type feedback with a feedback level of 70. But you're going to notice our uh, envelope is set with some exceedingly fast values here. We got 93 and 67 for our rates 2 and 3. So it really uh, decays away very, very quickly. And what this guy is doing is with a super high velocity sensitivity, it's to give us a lot more attack bite in our bass sound only at the highest velocities. So um, it's going to be a little bit hard to hear here in isolation, but let's turn off our everybody. And we'll turn on op 3. Now, more importantly, we've got operator 4 that's also going into operator 3. So let's again turn it on. So now we're going to hear the contribution of operator 4 and operator 3 combined because ultimately our velocity is set very very high and our envelope is set to decay very very quickly. The characteristics from op 4 as it comes through op 3 is going to be controlled by that. So now all the extra brightness from op 4 is going to be behave independently through this part of the chain than it does up here. So let's hear what that sounds like. So again, this is only for adding extra bite in the attack portion at very high velocities to give us more uh, dynamics. So I'm going to turn us everybody on. And this is our uh, basic example voice here. So it's sort of a hybrid uh, sawtooth pulse wave uh, single oscillator uh, bass sound. So. Let's talk about what I've built into here to show you some uh, really easy uh, differences on what goes on with our operator structures and our levels and everything. So again, I'm going to go back to algorithm 5 here, where we have everybody independently going into our carrier operator 1 directly. So none of our modulators are stacked. We just have a standard uh, 3 modulator branch. And back here. So you've noticed that it's kind of got more of a resonant filter type behavior. And again, that's because by stacking our modulators, we're creating a lot more harmonic content um, in our waveform because we've now created two complex waveforms uh, with operator 4 modulating ops 2 and 3 before they modulate operator 1. So one thing we uh, talked about in the article was the difference between saw and square type feedback. So you can see we've got two of our ops set to saw wave and two set to square. So let's show you some of the real quick, easy edits you can do here to make the sound completely change its character. First thing I'm going to do here is we're going to take op 2, change it from square to saw feedback, and now listen to what we've got. That's pretty much your standard straight sawtooth type synth bass. So I'm going to set him back to square. And now we're going to set our op 4 from saw to square. So you can hear we've changed the uh, harmonic content quite a bit there by taking out a lot of the uh, density because of course our square wave feedback has only the odd harmonic series present where the sawtooth 
type has all the harmonics present. So um, let's flop everybody backwards here. So we go saw, saw, square. And again, this is going to sound different again. So this is kind of like playing the wave shaping game we've mentioned in our earlier tutorials on how varying these parameters are acting like a little bit like a wave shaper. So uh, one other thing I want to point out here is um, our operator 3 contribution in this base example again is pretty subtle. What I'm going to do here is we're going to turn this up to 100 and now you're going to see much more influence of that operator on our resulting sound with the high velocities. Our original. And so you can hear we got a lot more snap in there now. So again, this is a component that you're going to tweak to your own taste. So now that we've got this operator up much higher in level, the changes we make in its feedback type is going to be uh, more drastic. So let's change it back to saw. So now you can hear that really bright crackle in the attack. And again, that is because we've got so much more harmonic content in the saw type feedback of having all the harmonics there as opposed to just the odds that's in the square. So let's put that back. Let's put this guy to saw to hear this variation. Put them all saw. So again, let's change our algorithm so we get rid of the stack. So we still have operator 3 at this higher level. But you can hear It really doesn't have that much effect now because by pulling out operator 4 from behind it, it's not a complex wave anymore. It's just our square type feedback. So let's go back to this guy. So that really highlights what happens when you start stacking your modulators. There's just a lot more harmonic content that uh, we get in our net sound. Um, by stacking our uh, modulators because every time a modulator comes down through the stack we create a complex wave. Then we have a complex wave modulating another modulator to make an even more complex wave until it finally gets to uh, the carrier. Okay, so let's talk about another thing I have set up in here that's kind of interesting and it has to do with using the pitch envelope to modulate individual operators. I've set up a pitch envelope that's got a little sharp flat and then back to normal uh, pitch bend with very fast rates here, 90, 90, 70, and 90. And what's kind of neat about Reface DX, besides the fact that you can turn it off and on for individual operators, is the fact it's a little inconsistent in the way it behaves. It doesn't fire exactly the same, I should say it doesn't trigger exactly the same every time you play a note. And this is actually kind of cool because when you assign it to just one of the operators and have a little instability of pitch, you got to remember how FM works. If we have the frequency change, it's like changing our ratio uh, and detuning this operator uh, very, very quickly. That's going to cause uh, basically an interaction in our harmonics that can be really kind of cool. So here's our original sound. And we're just going to turn the pitch EG on for op 2. You'll notice, without it, it's very regular. When you turn it on, the timbre changed slightly, and now the retriggering is much more analog. So let's go a little extreme here so you can really see the effect this has. I'm going to make that a lot deeper, and now listen to the difference. a lot more uh, inconsistencies that you would normally hear in an analog type sound. So I'm going to actually turn it on for OP4 as well. Turn it back off. That's our very consistent sound. 
So now let's turn it on for op three as well. So all those differences you hear aren't from me playing any harder or softer. It's actually from the uh, re-triggering uh, situation that goes on with the e G, pitch EG not being 100% consistent. So it's kind of a cool little uh, trick to analog up your sounds a little bit. So there you have it, the uh, example video for synth bass example. As always, take some time, mess around with your feedbacks, your levels. Now try your feedback types. Also, play around with your ratios here. You know, you get some neat accidents going on. You know, my happy accidents that I've mentioned that uh, just put, you know, some numbers in here. Play around. See, now we got a little kind of a pulse width mod thing going on. So play around, have fun, and as always, check out the article series on yamahasynth.com and of course the sounds we have on Soundmondo. Check them all out and have fun. Till next time.